Hello, this is FoodOffensive.com's weekly video broadcast, and I'm coming at you here uh, just with an audio version, me not really in front of the camera, but with the audio and with the um, navigation through some various articles and research that I found concerning stevia. That's right, I'm continuing this series on sweets, and this is stevia part two. I looked last week about the intro, a little bit about it, what it is, and like I promised last week, we're going to get into the healthy, the healthiness of it, the safety of it, um, and what should we, what if, if anything, we should be concerned about. Uh, this is, stevia is looking to be one of the best alternatives to sugar for, for lots of reasons, and people with uh, diabetes and and other insulin issues and things with sugars. And so I wanted to look first at an at a toxicology report. This is a report on stevia and the toxicology of uh, rogadioside A, a review. And uh, this was sourced, referred to as a source by Dr. Mercola and many others. And so I wanted to read it. It's quite lengthy, but I wanted to point out a few things here. It looks like it's about 28 pages, but I've highlighted a few things and I wanted to look at them. And basically it's a a toxicology report put out by Sarah uh, Kobilowski and Curtis D. Eckhart, PhD, from University of California, Los Angeles, that's UCLA by their Department of Environmental Health Sciences and Molecular Toxicology. So a very prestigious department, very prestigious school, and uh, we're going to look at some of the studies. And it kind of goes through here with the background on the two doctors and some of the others that were uh, helped work on this. But, but going right along in this, it says, first off, um, it was, this test was conducted, the, the review was conducted for the Center for Science and the Public Interest. And it says the research described in this supplement was peer-reviewed and said to be conducted in compliance with good laboratory practices and good clinical practices requirements. A little background that they put down here for stevia. It says rebaldioside A is a staviol glycoside derived from the herb stevia rebaldiana. And rebaldioside A and stevioside are the two main steviol glycosides found in this S. rebaldiana herb and are the two predominant derivatives used in high potency sweeteners. Stevioside differs from rebaldioside A by having one less glucomoiety. Uh, Stevioside glycosides have been used as food and medicine in Japan and South America for many years. But stevia is the leaf or extracted form is permitted to be sold in the U.S. only as a dietary supplement, as defined in Section 201 FF1 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. So a quick little background on it, talking a little bit more about the science than I was able to get into last time, talking about the, um, the two derivatives in there and uh, the glycosides in the steviocide. Now... Going right along here, there's there's quite a lengthy, like I said, review. It gets into a lot of technical things. Looks at the various, you know, testing that they did. There's a there's a graph or a uh, depiction of a stevioside glycoside metabolism, the components of that, and it just really quite lengthy and quite technical. But I wanted there was like I said, just a few things I wanted to point out here, and. Uh, so I wanted to scroll through and make sure I don't have anything highlighted up top. It's most of it at the bottom whenever it's giving the uh, the kind of the verdict, I guess you would say. So it goes here, page 15. It says, Summary and Discussion. Investigators demonstrated that Rebioside A has no adverse hemodynamic effects in people with normal to low normal blood pressure dosed with 1,000 milligrams a day for four weeks. Investigators also found no clement clinically significant effects of rebaldioside A treatment on patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. The only concerning finding of the glucose homeostasis study was an increase in ALT levels. This finding is not of great concern since it did not lead to any adverse effects, but further investigation would be necessary to determine the cause of the increase and in the long-term effects of rebaldioside A on ALT levels. 
So I found a little bit of a concern there, but uh, no adverse effects that they could find uh, with, with people with normal to low normal blood pressure. And it lists some more of the findings. And there's another thing I wanted to point out here. It says, the ability of, of stevioside and rabadioside A to cause reverse mutations as indicated by TA98 needs to be further investigated because such mutations suggest the possibility of carcinogenesis. Stevioside also caused DNA breakage in blood, spleen, liver, and brain cells in rats. Mutagenicity of this compound requires further careful investigation. So, um, obviously, the car <laughs> the carcinogenic uh, problems that it could could be an issue. So that's something that that I wanted to point out there. And then going on here with that same idea, that same subject, um, carcinogenicity studies have not found steviocide to be carcinogenic in rats. But further studies on rubadioside A, including a study on mice, are needed for several reasons, and it lists uh, the various reasons. And I'm not going to go through the list here, but you can look at this uh, study yourself, and I've looked in other videos why we say that uh, using mice and rats to study and why they look you know, why they are such a close representation of what that particular study or whatever that product is would do to, to a human because of their, um, their makeup and, and things being of their body, their biology being closer to that of humans than other, uh, particularly other species, but also for the testing of GMOs, of course, you want to look at what it's going to do to someone generationally speaking down the line maybe two three four generations down the line and with mice you can do that very easily because of uh, you can turn over several several generations in such a short amount of time so you can get that uh, what's going to happen when something gets passed on to the offspring and so on and so forth so but this particular study you can see it it, it recommends um, further testing and so I did want to point out one more thing here. Like I said, this is very extensive. It gives quite quite the list of references and things like that. But if you keep going here, if, if you were just to skip over all this, like I almost did, there's an Appendix B. It's on page 25. It says Conflicts of Interest, and it says it names the authors. Uh, it lists the ones here saying that they have received financial support from Cargill. And... They some of them are employed by Cargill Incorporated, and then some of them are, are employed by the Coca Cola Company. So these are the very companies that wish to gain from possibly from this particular herb. And so it's interesting to look into that. I want to, I do want to dive in deeper than that, deeper into that on a, on another video, talking about the connection there because this may this may get a little bit deeper as we go as far as uh, who's who seeks to gain and what are the implications for them being able to uh, trademark or, or uh, I guess, patent, I guess I, I should say, patent stevia, and what are the restrictions on that? I might have to do a certain uh, video just on that. Um, but moving right along, there is a, an, a lengthy, I guess you would say, review or writing put out by Dr. Marcola. I use his uh, research and his um, sources quite often. That's how I found the toxicology review for for stevia but I wanted to look at his his uh, little short book here entitled stevia a tale of greed profit and deceit and obviously this wouldn't be available for download from my site because this is something you have to uh, subscribe to dr. Mercola to get so in interest of, of that and respecting that those wishes I I would say you'd have to uh, get it from him but it's very uh, very important information, and it also goes to compare aspartame and sucralose to stevia as well, and I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I wanted to point out some of the things he says about stevia. Um, he starts out by saying he's he strongly agrees that uh, there is too much sugar in the typical American diet. Um, he says that over 150 million Americans turning are turning to artificial sweeteners, 
Uh, he gives kind of the breakdown. There's some key health advantages to stevia. Um, he's citing on the fact that stevia can be a good thing. Obviously, I've always said uh, about other things, and I'll say it about this, anything in within reasonable portions is going to be okay, but any too much of a bad thing can, can definitely be bad. And so uh, you want to just take that to heart when you're when you're looking at these different sweeteners but even the ones like stevia that we're saying is are mostly seem to be good but he's got a few key health advantages listed here in his little mini book it's uh it says stevia is a natural virtually calorie free herb unlike sugar stevia won't cause a spike in blood glucose levels stevia is natural and has not been linked to the dangers associated with the artificial sweeteners stevia has been used medicinally 1500 years in South America with no reported ill side effects. Stevia tastes extremely sweet, up to 15, up to 250 times sweeter than sugar, in fact, meaning a very little goes a long way. So with that, it's extremely sweet, up to 15, up to 250 times sweeter than sugar, in fact, meaning a very little goes a long way. So with that, you know, it doesn't take much at all to, to get your uh, key result in that. Uh, going along here, Stevia Rabaudiana has been the subject of an aggressive campaign by the Food and Drug Administration to keep it from American consumers. Uh, in a subsection titled Stevia, the best kept natural health secret in the Western world. This is the indigenous people of Paraguay and other South American countries have used Stevia in a remedy, as a remedy for diabetes and gum disease for over 1,500 years. And going on, he says that uh, research studies have cited stevia for its ability to manage blood sugar levels, regulate blood pressure, promote healthy weight, so on and so forth. And, and that uh, those research studies are cited at the bottom of this article. You can see that for yourself if you grab a copy of this from him. Uh, also, some other things that it has seen to, uh, to help is that it helps to retard plaque on teeth, helps to deter the bacteria uh, bacterial growth that causes cavities, uh, soothes scrapes, accelerate healing, and reduce scarring. So many, many, many different things, not just uh, not just taking internally, but externally. It can help discourage blemishes and acne, add luster to your hair, and rejuvenate your scalp, some even say. So pretty interesting there. He has a little, a little breakdown, a little table here on how sugar how stevia stacks up to sugar and artificial sweeteners, uh, talking about the various things. Uh, stevia, even even just even just compared to regular sugar, no calories, no net carbs, zero glycemic index, all natural. Uh, of course, the other ones there are artificial. You can see see this chart here if, if you're watching the video version of this. Um, Going right down here, I don't want to cover everything here. There's just so much to, to look at. You can get a copy of this yourself and really and really look at it. Like I said, I might get into the, some other parts of this, comparing it to other sweeteners later. Uh, he goes on to say, Japan in Japan, about 40% of the sweetener market is estimated to be stevia-based. We looked at that last week in the intro, uh, in the last video about the intro to stevia. In the section titled, Test Confirmed Stevia is Safe, he Quotes a doctor, Daniel uh, Mowry. He's a doctorate in phyto. He has, has a doctorate in phytopharmacology, and he has studied stevia extensively. He says that few substances have ever yielded such consistently negative results in toxicity trials as have stevia. And of course, con consistently negative results meaning that it doesn't cause. You know, it's not a positive when it comes to. Um, yielding the toxicity it's it comes that the test results come back negative and that's a good thing um no cancer no birth defects no acute and no chronic untoward effects nothing he says and he uh cites that resource also or that source so why does the u.s shun stevia well he he uh attributes to the fact that as a natural product stevia cannot be patented and it could be devastating to the profits of the artificial artificial sweetener industry. We know that aspartame has been pushed through through various people having their right, knowing the right people in the right places, as I looked at in that long aspartame study that we did in a series of special reports. Uh, there are backers. Um, 
the backers of Stevia form a much less formidable coalition and include the American Herbal Product Association and the Lipton Tea Company. Um, in fact, he points out the fact that Celestial Seasonings used Stevia as a flavoring in many of their teas until 1986, when without warning, the FDA raided their warehouse and seized their entire stock of Stevia. And it goes on to say the FDA gave no reason for it, so on and so forth. This is where he's getting into the real uh, greed and deception around around uh, Stevia and the conspiracy around it. So I'm not going to look at all that this time for time's sake, but maybe in future videos we'll look at this as well when we go back to con uh, kind of compare the different sugars and sweeteners. So that's it here. He has his references there at the end, and uh, it's quite a resource on, on the Stevia and, and what it what it is with, with sources and everything that you can look up yourself. Um, on his site, drmarcola.com. But other than that, we're going to end he right here for this week's uh, video, this, this video part two of Stevia in a longer series of videos on sweeteners, artificial and natural. And uh, we're looking at Stevia and how it's good. Is it bad? So far we've found that it's mostly good. And so we're going to get into next week. I'm already looking into... Um, products that stevia might be in how how things have been suppressed possibly and how other how possibly stevia might be on its on its way to being the holy grail of sweeteners so until next time this is foodoffensive.com coming at you from the front lines of our food supply thank you for joining me